Hey, Chuck. Hey, Neil. How's it going? Yeah, about this time of year, your name shows up. I see it in emails and in announcements, and you're like hosting Earth Day events. That, I'm just proud of you for being out there on this. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Is I'm it, uh, very much an advocate for the um, uh, finding a solution to the climate crisis. Wait, wait, so. but uh, Charles, did anyone remind you you are a comedian, so you don't have to do this? this yes. <laughs> and I have to tell you, though, uh, it's funny you say that because sometimes I'll have I'll be a part of these symposiums and things and they'll be like, doctor, this doctor, this, you know, the head of this, uh, um, this government branch, this government branch and comedian. So nice. And everybody is like, what the hell is he doing? What is he doing here? <laughs> All right, but we we love you, and we know uh, we know that you're you're where you need to be because that you need somebody to make it real, right? That's Absolutely. what you. That's yeah. What you well, do. and this time of year, this is a great time of year because we always acknowledge Earth Day, and you know, right, everybody, right, right. everybody's a, everybody's familiar with Earth Day, but it's funny the like if I were to ask my kids where did Earth Day come from, they wouldn't know. Like, you know what I mean? But they know every day, every year because in school, oh, it's Earth Day. We're going to have Earth Day. Right. And it's, I always thought it's a little weird that we celebrate Earth, right? Does Earth know or care, you know? True. Oh, oh, yeah. it, it gives us life. It, it gives us food. And But there's, there's no, like, refrigerator day. Exactly. <laughs> That's where I get my food. <laughs> right. Yeah. Happy Fridge Day. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I had a good one, man. Mine's, <laughs> mine's full up. <laughs> So it is a, a little odd, but uh, if we if we sort of unpack all of this and go back in time, uh, the first Earth Day was 1970. That's 50 years ago, dude. Oh nice. man! Wow. And I was I was and I'm so old. I was around back then. Just okay. letting you know. Okay, that's how old I am. That's how old and, I am. I was here for the first Earth Day. <laughs> I, I walked to the first Earth Day both ways up here. <laughs> That's a that's a rocking chair on the porch story right exactly. there. Exactly, the very right. first Earth Day. Yeah, I I, I I I I was at the first Earth Day. It was so long ago that we called it Proto Planet Day. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so anyway, so the first was 1970. So you can ask, well, what what was what was going on, right? Yeah. Well, if you go back a few years earlier, I think when was it 1962. Uh, Rachel Carson published a book called Silent Spring. Nice. And many people know about this book, especially environmentalists. And many people sort of trace the birth of the modern environmental movement to that book. But what it did was it, it, it highlighted the causes and effects of things we are doing in our environment to our food stocks. All right, and it particularly highlighted DDT as a pesticide. You know, I had a noble cause. I don't want insects eating my food, right? I want right. to eat the food. Let's get rid of the insects. Here's a chemical that right. was had recently be, recently been invented just a couple of, I think, the late 30s, 1940s. It was a new chemical that had this effect on insects. Well, what effect does it have on you? All right, and so here's, or the environment, or the soils. Or, so it was an exploration of the causes and effects of our actions on our Subsequently banned too, right, DDT? Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. So, but we can ask, when was it banned? The book came out in 62, was it banned in 63? No, 64, no, 65, no, no, no. So we'll get to that. Right, so that happened. Meanwhile, there are also these like uh, pollution incidences, all right? Pollutive moments in the news, like a, the, a lake dies. That is, the fishes in the lake die because some factory was pumping pollutants into the lake or a stream gets polluted. So we had a sense that there was pollution in the environment. Air pollution was there, but no one really thought globally about it. Right. All right, you say that I'll clean up the stream and everything will be fine. Let's fix the lake. This is my lake, it's in my backyard, let's fix it. This is pollution just over this city, let's just fix that and all will be fine. And no one is thinking, as Carl Sagan said, that maybe air molecules don't have to carry passports to move around the earth. Water molecules that, that are contaminated here go into the ground, they infect the water table, go, go into the ocean, travels the world. We are not isolated on this planet and that concept was not widely embraced in the 1960s or at any time before. So, so what happens? Okay, 
let's keep going in time. Uh, oh, by the way, there was a congressional committee set up to talk about the things that Rachel Carson warned about. But nothing, there was no legislation that came out of that. There was in the few years that followed it, because it was a best-selling book, and people were talking about it. Right, so let's keep moving. Uh, the years unfold, 1965. Oh, by the way, the Vietnam War is building, all right? Uh, ah. and, and our presence there, the, so the, the hot war in Southeast Asia, the Cold War with the Soviet Union. So we have, oh, oh, and the civil rights movement, all right? We got issues that are preoccupying us. No matter it's, so much good music came out of the 60s. And the 60s, okay. And Motown, yes. <laughs> <laughs> People needed it, man. <laughs> that, that, that was an escape. All right, so here's, so the 60s was a particularly turbulent decade in American history. Perhaps the most turbulent since the Civil War 100 years earlier. Mm -hmm. So I, did we simply not have the bandwidth to say, oh, I, here I am, I'm, you know, I'm protesting for civil rights. Oh, now let me think about DDT, right? This is, you know, what is, what is people's bandwidth to think about problems? Now, here's what happens. 1968, uh, Apollo 8 is the first time anyone ever leaves Earth. And you know where they go? They go to the moon to leave Earth for a destination. Right. They go to the moon, December 1968. And to me, that was the most significant of all space missions ever flown. And based because... on all the problems that were down here on Earth, I am surprised they came back. <laughs> Nick didn't say, hey, let's pitch tent wherever we go. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> What are we going back to that place for? <laughs> DDT and war and civil war. rights and God. So they go out to the moon and they do several orbits around the moon. You, you, people haven't heard of them because they didn't walk on the moon. All right? right. That's why they're not so sort of high up in the list. But for me, as the first people to ever leave Earth, they go into orbit on, around the moon. And one of those orbits, they lifted their Hasselblad camera. And there was Earth rising above the lunar landscape. And they snapped that photo. And this was Earth from space. Nice. As, as only the universe could reveal it to you. Right. As now, the flat I disc that it is. <laughs> 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 and so, so, but I knew what Earth looked like because I have representations of it in my social studies class. Right. Earth has color-coded countries on it. Earth has no clouds. Right. Earth has all these all these boundaries drawn in. That's what Earth looks like to me and to everybody else. And now down the pike comes this image of Earth from space. Not only Apollo 8, but every Apollo mission since then has contributed to this portfolio of Earth from space. And nice. we took a first look at that picture, and there is Earth alone in the darkness of, of space with no one coming from outside to help us, to save us from ourselves. And there was Earth, silent, alone, with oceans, land, clouds. I submit to you that we, Americans, the Apollo program, NASA, went to the moon to explore the moon, but we discovered Earth uh -huh. for the first time. Nice. I submit to you that a cosmic perspective descended on us all as a kind of a firmware upgrade in our consciousness. So that picture comes out December 1968. We walk on the moon July 1969. And in 1970, what happens? Oh, uh, the Environmental Protection Agency is signed into law by a Republican president, by the way. All right. So why, why didn't we have an Environmental Protection Agency in 1960 or 1950 or 1940 or 1965? Why then? Because what? the Democrats hate <laughs> Earth. <laughs> <laughs> so why? Why? All right. Let's keep going. Uh, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration NOAA. was founded in 1970. NOAA. And before that, we had never really combined 
the air and the ocean in the same phrase before. Right. This right. is a this is an early indication of the interplay between the the atmosphere, the oceans, and the land. And Noah is charged with monitoring our climate, our weather, in the service of our safety, our health, and commerce, especially commerce that relies on the seas to bring goods and services across. So it was founded in 1970. So what else happened? Oh, uh, the Comprehensive Clean Air Act was passed. Comprehensive Clean Water Act was passed. I got one for you, 1971. We get that public service announcement with the Native American with the tear coming out his eye. Yes. All right. That commercial, he's standing on the side on the on a freeway and people put, throw trash out trash the window, out window. L- l- lands at his feet, and there's a tear in his eye. Holding aside the fact that that actor was Italian, let's hold that aside. Right. <laughs> the, the, yeah. That is one of the most recognized public service announcements to not pollute Earth. Now, it's not like we only started throwing trash out the window in the 1970s. We were doing that in the 60s and 50s. But why then? What? What? Again, this is that firmware upgrade that we all were experiencing. 1971, Doctors Without Borders was founded. It's got nothing to do with the environment, but why did they call themselves Without borders. Where did that where did that phrasing come? I'm, I submit to you that had we not gone to the moon and looked back to Earth mm-hmm. without borders, they would have said, oh, we're doctor, we're international doctors, doctors or right. globe trotting doctors, something in reference. We're to- border busting doctors. <laughs> <laughs> but without borders, that's a that's a mindset that even gives it that name. And yes, DDT would get banned. When? 1973, as would leaded gas. All of that happened in the years we were going to the moon. Wow. So I say to you, what is the value of the space program? Is it Tang? Is it Velcro? Or is it a total consciousness that maybe Earth is one ecosystem and we're all participants in it and we have to do something globally, not just locally? to ensure our own survival living in the ecosystem that sustains it all. So so that's, so, and and so, oh, and of course, 1970, the first Earth Day, <laughs> okay? Yeah, <laughs> nice, yeah. All right, and we've been having Earth Days ever since. Well, man, that is beautiful, number one. That's a, what a comprehensive breakdown of the history of Earth Day. Everybody should see this video. Everybody should see this video. (laughs) And also, everybody should see this video so that you can understand the adoption of this cosmic perspective um, with respect to looking at Earth as, you know, the home that we have. Wait, wait, Chuck, I don't know if anyone anyone told you, you can't, in the video that people are looking at, tell them to watch the video in case they're not watching the video. That doesn't yes, work. I, yes, because you watching a video, you need to go tell somebody else to watch tell this video. Tell somebody else, okay. Right? <laughs> spread, spread the word, man. I'm serious. This is great stuff. Because right now, the only way that we're going to see a change in our human behavior is if somebody from the United Federations of Planets lands here and it's just like, what happened, you guys? You were doing so well. I mean, we had our eye on you since 1970 and things were going really well and then you just... It all up. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Speak wow. truth to power. That's yeah. the truth to power. Right. There you go. All right, Chuck, we got to end it there. All so right. uh, that's, that's just great. Little, that's little, great. A little bit of Earth Day's birthday. Excellent. Just talking Earth about Day's that. Birthday. B- b- actual birth date. There you go. There you Back go. in 1970. Originally, they wanted on the equinox um, on March 21st. But it took some administrative delays and timing to get it organized. And just by tradition now, it's held on April 22nd worldwide. Sweet. Yeah. yeah. All right. You got it, Chuck. Uh, we'll, we'll do this again. Yeah. Yeah, this was fun. This was good. All right. This has been a Star Talk Explainer video, the Earth Day edition. Neil deGrasse Tyson here. Keep working out. <laughs>